hey guys what's up i had to come on quickly because i missed you guys and i hope you missed me i want to quickly say if you have not subscribed to my channel please go ahead and press the subscribe button um and also click the notification so that whenever i post a video you are notified not <laughs> you are notified and feel free to share this video with your friends and your family and everyone okay quick disclaimer before you get into this video everybody's story is different and everybody's trajectory is going to be different but this video is a video on averages the things i have experienced the things i know um the things um other immigrants i know have experienced and have shared with me and um and so um this is not going to apply to everyone but this is just you know i just thought i needed to say this and i needed to use this video to encourage you okay all right let's get into it see ya I wore this red lipstick for you guys because I have absolutely nowhere to go. Well, except the grocery store. And I have nowhere to go really, but I just wore this red lipstick because I was feeling kind of frisky and I was like, hmm, you know? Okay, you don't care. You probably don't care. You're like, just tell me what I'm here to find out. Lego, I wanted to make this video to talk about why people, why some, why some people come to the US and are not successful. Why some people go to Canada and are not successful. Why some people go to the UK, go abroad, leave their country, go to the West, um, go to a land of more opportunity and are not successful. And you know what I, what I mean by successful is obviously su success is subjective. Like really, what is success? <laughs> success. <laughs> oh, my mind is elsewhere, guys. But my point is really what is success? Success is subjective. But for the purposes of this video, I'm, I'm going to define success as moving abroad. Um, being extremely comfortable, being able to send money back home, being able to, even if you want, buy your parents a car, build a house, you know, that kind of comfort um, where you have room to save, to do for people, and you're not in debt. Like you're actually, you actually have enough money to do that. Okay. All right. So the first reason why a lot of people are not successful when they leave their country, why they're not successful abroad, is because they do not possess the work ethic. Let me tell you. In America, for example, and I'm going to use America because that's what I know. In America, for those of you who don't know, is very similar to Canada. Very, very similar. A lot of people that come here and are not successful is because they don't have work ethic. There's no work ethic here. There's no beating around the bush. There's no coming late. You know, there's no leaving work early. There's nothing, there's nothing like that, right? You need to have a good work ethic. You need to be able to work hard. Because I'm going to use Nigeria as an example. In Nigeria, you know there's people work hard but it's not there's no there's no systemic um like there's no structure okay so you can kind of do what you want like think about civil servants in nigeria lazy i mean they take bribes they just live anyhow kind of lives right abroad you can't do that right so for example let me give you guys a perfect example my friend came here um and she would miss meetings like she was a student, she had a graduate assistant position um, job. She would miss meetings with professors. She was late to meetings. She wasn't pretty, she wasn't like following that work ethic that a lot of Westerners have and Americans have. And she was fired after her first semester because she wasn't doing really well. And that's the problem. If you do not have that strong work ethic, you won't succeed. You have to be able to work hard, okay, and work smart. I like what Dipo, Dr. Dipo Wini Dipo says. He doesn't just work hard, he works smart. And I agree, me too. I don't just work hard, you have to work smart. But you have to you have to understand the work ethic of the country you're in and really pull your weight. Don't bring your baggage from Nigeria and think it's gonna work here. It's not. It's not. Okay. Another thing is that people are not able to assimilate. Let me tell you, my friends that I tweeted about that are making crazy money. The guy even has an American accent now. And I'm not saying Oh, the light. I'm not saying that you have to change your accent or, you know, all I'm saying is that you have to be able to assimilate into the culture. Some of you, you move, some people, some of the people that have not been successful move abroad and they don't know how to hold a conversation. Like when you move abroad, there's some, there's some etiquettes you learn. You have to assimilate. So for example, a lot of people that just move here to the US, for example, they don't look their professors in the eye. They're looking down constantly. They're looking away and stuff. That's not good. That's not going to make people interested in you or that's not going to make people say, oh, I want to give them, give this person a job because you're so Nigerian 
you know, you, and it's not a bad thing. Let me just clarify. It's not a bad thing to be Nigerian. But you also need to learn about where you are. You also need to learn about America and say, look, how can I assimilate? How can I be my best self? Um, how can I be my best Nigerian self, but also be American, you know? And so you have to do things like shake people firmly, you know, look people in the eye. You know, like Americans love to say, awesome, amazing. Those are little things that will take you so far, right? When you interview for jobs, when you interview for positions, those are the things that will make people like you. So some of those people are like, oh my God, it's impossible. I've lived in America for 20 years. <gasps> I've not even made any money. Yeah. Um, well, every, first of all, everybody's life is different, right? People, I mean, I've lived here for um, about 10 years, 11 years, and I'm probably making more money than someone who has lived here for 20 years. And there's somebody who, Lucia, you guys know Lucia, my boo. She moved here like four years after I moved here, five years after I moved here, moved here. And she's making more money than I'm making. So, I mean, so what's to say how long you've lived anywhere? It's really how well you assimilate into people's, into the culture, right? When companies interview you, are you, are you just, are you speaking very, are you speaking in a way that they don't understand, you know? Um, and I'm not, this, again, I'm not trying to sound insensitive, but I'm saying that there are things, there are ways, um, there's, there's some things that you have to do to really make yourself marketable in um, in the country, the foreign country you move to, for, for for example, America. And, you know, America has its cultures and its things. You know, they love American football. My friend that's making crazy money, the one I tweeted about, let me tell you this guy, let me tell you what this, a lot of things this guy did that helped me too. He learned about American football. He learned about American basketball, all those little things. So he would interview and they loved him because first of all, he and his wife are brainiac smart and they learned about random things, random tidbits, even me, like for me, I've learned so much about America. Like you need to make American friends. You need to reach out. You need to be open, right? Some Nigerians that move here never make any American friends. Some, not even just Nigerians, some foreigners that move here never make any American friends, never try to understand the culture of America. They just, you know, they just want to be in their own little world. So, so that is a problem, right? Because whenever you interview for a job, you're, you're kind of disconnected from the culture of, of the country you're in. And that makes you not as marketable and not as like likable. To be successful, your course of study plays a part, right? Um, if you study something like English literature or something in the arts, it's probably harder to make a lot of money. And it's unfortunate, trust me, it's unfortunate, but that's the truth. Um, it's probably harder to make a lot of money. If you're in something like, um, if you're in engineering, if you're in computer science, if you're a medical doctor, you know, a nurse, those kind of professions, that's where a lot of the money is, right? So some people that say, oh my gosh, it's not possible to make that much money, blah, blah, blah. You know, what is your area though, right? So some people are also not very successful when they move abroad because they're more concerned with their passion instead of being practical. And this absolutely sucks. Like I do not support it, right? But that's the reality, right? I want all of us to, be pa to do what we're passionate about. But sometimes that's not what's gonna get you the money you want, okay? So if, you know, if you're passionate about literature, I don't know I keep using literature. I have a friend who did literature and I couldn't get a job. But let's say you're passionate about um, history, but you know that there's probably no jobs in history um, or the jobs pay very little, you know, that's your passion. So maybe don't do that to make money. Maybe go to nursing school or go to, you know, surgical tech school or go somewhere that has um, some practicality to earnings where you can make a lot of money in, okay? So, but a lot of, some people come, go abroad and are very focused on what they want, what they're passionate about. And, you know, and they end up not making a lot of money and, you know, and then they, doubt when people make money i'm a prime let me tell you guys i'm a prime example of following your passion over being practical okay when i moved to the u.s my brother-in-law was like do nursing or go to um go to tech school go to um go read computer science or something and i was like no i'm passionate about public health and i am really passionate about public health and um and he was like well that's where your money is and i was like no i'm gonna do public health i don't care you know, I was like, I'm going to do public health. That's what I love. And, you know, and I have some friends who 
um, went into computer science, who went into coding, who went into all that like cool stuff, and they're making like double, triple what I'm making now. So you know, so I'm happy though because I love public health and I'm making good money, and I'm you know I'm able to help people and you know do whatever I love. But if your goal is to just make all the money, in like when you move abroad, like you just want to make all the money, then you have to be practical over being passionate okay think about that <laughs> oh, oh, you know it's hard but that's just life you know uh, we're not copy and uh, we're not you know rich kids you know we're kids we're people who are just trying to hustle so okay so another issue is that people move abroad and get distracted like people people want to make quick money okay there's no patience because when you come abroad, you can earn, the day after you get your work permit and all that, you can start earning up to $15 an hour selling burgers, right? And people get distracted. There's no long-term goal, right? Because you move abroad, you're, you're immediately you're changing dollar to Naira, right? And you're like, hey, oh my God, I can make $200 in one day serving burgers? Oh my gosh, okay. And then before you know it, school starts to take a backseat to your dreams right because you, you're so focused on fast money because you're so excited and I understand because it's exciting when you start making money in dollars in pounds and you start changing it to naira it's exciting right but that's where you start to get distracted you have to think long term you have to settle down do your schooling think about where you want to go right don't be carried away by fast money but a lot of people move and are so carried away they're so excited about all the money they're making all of a sudden especially in naira they start sending money home and everybody's like yes you've arrived you could make a hundred times more if you stay focused stay in school do your masters if you want do your phd and then start making way 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 more right so but a lot of people i know i mean i know so many people that are just doing menial jobs because they just were so excited about the dollar exchange rate they were so excited about the money they were making like a month after moving that they just never thought about their future and how much more they could make if they just kept at it you know slow and steady wins the race a lot of nigerians i know that are in debt you know there are a lot of nigerians i know that um are just living in apartments when they could be living in a mansion because when they when they moved they weren't thinking long term they were thinking short term how can i make money now you know and and you know i don't blame them because it's exciting you know it's exciting especially when you come from nothing sometimes and when you move abroad and when you start changing that dollar that pound to naira if you're like this is it this is this is my life i'm gonna flip burgers for the rest of my life <laughs> i'm kidding nobody says that but i mean if you don't take school seriously if you don't take your assignments if you don't take life outside of fast money seriously then in 20 years you're gonna be one of those people arguing that um that people can actually be really really successful i want to encourage you when you migrate don't get carried away with fast money be, be consistent stay consistent in school stay in school do something amazing another one this one this one is kind of sensitive but i've always said this i'm a, i teach and i do not believe there are any stupid people or dumb people but if you're not if you're not quick to pick things up right you probably will go really far abroad like and I say this because I've seen it, I've experienced it, okay? They're, they're Americans, they're Canadians that are probably much slower than you are, but they're gonna go much farther than you would ever go because you were born in a different country. That's just what it is, okay? You were born in a different country, so you're an immigrant. You speak with a different accent, so you're gonna be expected to produce double the work, double the effort, you know? And so, like, you don't have you don't have the option to not be smart, okay? So you really, really have to have that intelligence um, where, you know, you're able to ask questions, you know, you're able to, to show yourself, you know, to show that you're smart and people take interest in you because the default is, oh, you're an immigrant, nah. you know. So when you're in class, when you're interviewing for a job, you have to do double, you have to do extra to really show yourself out. I don't know why I keep leaning forward. I want to like, be in the camera and hug you guys and tell you it's gonna be okay i really do it is gonna be okay okay it is gonna be okay just all these things i'm saying just think on them okay 
So, okay. So, yeah. So, being smart helps a lot. The last thing I want to talk about is being rude. And this is, this is going to come really, really crazy um, to you guys. Because some of you are like, wait, why would you be rude? But I have come across immigrants that um, have been so rude, so rude, so condescending. Do you know that on a job, on, I, I, was on an, I was on an interview panel and we interviewed this Nigerian guy, which is so crazy. He was like in his 50s and, you know, and we brought him on campus to interview him. And he looks at me and he was like, you're so young. Like, like we, you know, like judging me um, because I was so young because he, he couldn't tell because we did a phone interview um, and he, he couldn't, he didn't see me. And so when we brought him in, you know, I, he met me and he was like, oh, Dr. Muta. Hmm. He was like, and he was so rude to me because of my age. And, and I guess he felt more comfortable because he felt like, oh, she's also Nigerian. She's a baby, you know? And I'm like, I am on the committee interviewing you. I literally have a say in whether you get this job or not. But I don't think he cared. And he kept mentioning my age and kept referencing my age and my looks. And, and everyone was so uncomfortable. And obviously, he did not get that job. So my point is, I know in a place like Nigeria or like other parts of maybe Africa, I don't know, I can speak from Nigeria. It's okay to make those references, you know. Um, like, it's okay to tell people, oh, oh, you're so beautiful. Like, you know. Like, like this guy literally said, oh, you're, you're pretty, a beautiful woman. Like, who says that during an interview? Nobody. You do not make reference to people's looks. You do not comment, comment on people's age. Just, you do not do those things, right? So, um, he didn't get the job. And so my point is, even though it's, even though, even though it is acceptable in our countries, our country of origin, it's not acceptable when you move. And, you know, I know someone that has not been able to get a job. Um, they, he moved here on the green card. He has not been able to get a job because he just went, he just has refused to understand the American culture. He has refused to try to, to, to be less Nigerian. And it's not like being Nigerian is bad, but he has refused to be less of the bad things about Nigeria. You know what I mean? And so, you know, we always laugh. He works at Walmart and, you know, and those are the kind of people that will be like, it's not... Those are the kind of people that will be on Twitter when they see people's success stories. Ah, ah, it's so hard. It's not that easy. But you you don't want to make it easy on yourself, though. You don't want to learn how to assimilate um, and be better and be a better Nigerian-American, you know? So, anyway. Ah, guys. <laughs> Gosh. I just I had to make this video because I just I want to encourage you guys um, that, you no, know, it's not easy, okay? Coming to the US, come going to Canada, going to the UK and excelling is not easy. It is actually difficult. Like you you I mean, it's difficult. But it's doable. Like if you work your butt off in a smart way, if you assimilate into the country, if you drop the crazy bad habits from your home country, but I didn't say I didn't say all I didn't say habits, I said the bad ones. Like being late. If you drop all those things and then you work smart and hard and you're practical with the course of study you pick i swear to you the world is your oyster it's not rocket science the system here works the system here works obviously obviously there's racism that's a big thing right people are going to judge you because of the beautiful chocolate skin you have uh, people are going to judge you people are going to judge your accent um but a lot of people are actually going to be intrigued by the accent more than anything I've gotten more intrigue versus judgment over my accent. Um, so I don't really care. And you guys know, like, you guys, we know each other. We know each other. Like, you don't really, you're here to hustle and help your family back home or build a life for yourself, right? So don't let those things get you down, okay? You have to, you have to move with, an, with, with a tender heart with a strong spirit. You know what I mean? Tender heart and strong spirit so that, racial justice moves you and makes you want to fight but you also have a strong spirit to not let those things break you down but let those things help you even move farther and further and even do better um, than you would even dream of than your families your parents would ever dream of so yeah okay so i want to quickly tell you guys a quick story on how i lost an opportunity because i was so close-minded right i interviewed for a job and um, 
they took me to a local restaurant and um and you know i feel like a lot of nigerians a lot of immigrants don't have an open palate okay um and i'm one of those people I, i'm not very adventurous with food and so i went and so i went on this i went on the interview they took me to this restaurant like the the all love they all raved about and the food was horrible and i couldn't eat it and i was so stupid that i couldn't force myself to eat it right to kind of impress them um and i was just and let me tell you what i did so i put the first spoon in my mouth and it was it was like a dough with okra in it so think about meat pie that has an okra feeling in it and i beat it and i was like oh my god there's okra in this thing and i immediately spit it out during dinner during an interview okay yeah that happened guess what i did not get the job right so that's just a, that's like a perfect example as to why some people just don't succeed some people don't succeed because they don't want they're not disciplined enough to, to know that hey you know don't be so nigerian like i should have swallowed that i should have swallowed it and just forced myself to eat it I mean, one dinner, but I was so like, ugh, gross, ugh, like what the heck? When I think about that experience, it's so funny and it's so bad and it's okay. I didn't get the job. They probably thought, ugh, who is this girl? Like, ew, this is our favorite restaurant. And it's okay, you know, because people, people want a, a person that they can, they can work with and people want a person that they can assimilate with. And I was such a local bush girl that I spit out food on, during dinner in front of people interviewing me. All right. I just wanted to add that real quick <laughs> so to give you a laugh. Um, all right, see ya. Bye. <laughs>